Racing in Brno, Brno 5.4 kilometer racetrack, which yesterday was a host of great racing in the Suzuki Swift Cup Europe race number one. There was lots of fighting, lots of overtaking, lots of action up until the last lap of the race. Well, as you can probably hear, also the previous race is now being uh, finished completely with the podium ceremonies. Uh, so the anthems being played and they will be played for a little while now still because there's a lot of classes uh, to celebrate. In the meantime, we are going to start the formation lap for the Suzuki Swifts and start the race itself. There we go on to the formation lap of race number two with Suzuki Swift Cup Europe. Gabor Tim, he is the series champion for 2021. And he will be starting in his bright yellow Suzuki from uh, fifth place. Alex Sofka was uh, entangled in lots of battles yesterday also with Gabor Tim and also with Gergerats. These three are going to fight for it again here in Brno. And we're going to see uh, how well does Philip Dietrich starting from pole position. Yesterday's winner Attila Bucci in eighth. That means that the top eight is reversed for the grid of uh, race number two. are the uh, cars in the lower positions you see that's the previous generation of Suzuki Swifts that's the 1.6 class with uh, on one hand actually engines with a bigger displacement but naturally aspirated so uh, having a lesser performance a lower performance than the newer Swifts that uh, complete the majority of the field in the Swift Cup Europe. Here we are at the stadium section. Great for spectators. However, as it's already the end of the weekend and uh, the majority of the main series, or well, let's say the main series are already over, then there are not many uh, spectators left on those grassy grandstands, on those grassy hills. But whoever is there, uh, they can s oversee uh, multiple corners at once. So exiting the stadium section, we are now going to run down the hill into the corner of Kevin Schwanz and reach the lowest point on the track. And from there, it's a pretty steel, uh, st steep section up the hill all the way to the start and finish straight. So uh, a great flow on this track great if you've managed to find a good rhythm but I guess that uh, that's not really something that these drivers are gonna enjoy much of in this race because they are bound to be uh, fighting with each other pretty much all the time all through the race that's what they are doing it's a close cup racing uh, there are usually fights in pretty much every single corner on pretty much every single lap this is the steep uphill section don't really want to lose any momentum there 
Otherwise, as we've already said many times this weekend, if you make a mistake down at the bottom of the hill, it's going to stay with you all the way to the top of the hill to the start and finish straight. You're just going to be slow and slow and slow. So the drivers are now coming back onto the start and finish straight to the starting grid. And we're about to see the start of race number two in the Suzuki Swift Cup Europe. The pace car also ready there. And it will complete the first lap with the, the complete pack just to make sure and just in case there is an incident, a serious incident, to be at the scene of it as fast as it possibly can. So the drivers are now lining up in their grid spots. And in just a couple of seconds, we will be racing for the last time for the broadcast this weekend. The grid is ready and away we go. Philip Dietrich starts from pole position and will be defending from Bendekus Molnar into the first corner. 30 minutes on the clock, already ticking down. And down the inside goes Bendekus Molnar immediately on Philip Dietrich. So it seems that Philip Dietrich has lost the lead in this race. Behind him, it looks like it's Alex Sofka already, who has now dealt with Martin Zellhofer at the start. So he's up to P3. Gabor Tim fighting out there with uh, Gergerat. And up the hill we go on the opening lap of the race with Bendekus Molnar now in the lead of it. Philip Dietrich fell down into second. Alex Sofka third. Martin Zellhofer right behind him. Gabor Tim having another go down the inside into the fourth corner. No clashes, no contacts. Lots of respect being shown among the drivers there on the opening lap of the race. It will be a long one, so no need to crash out immediately on the first corner and on the first lap. Now we are entering the stadium section. Sideways we go, as usual, drifting through the right-hander into the stadium section there. This is the car number 533, Attila Bucci, yesterday's race winner, fighting with Fabian Orfandl. And this is another fight, Martin Zellhofer not really happy about losing third place. So immediately diving down under uh, Alex Sofka and up into third he goes. Alex Sofka will now have to defend from uh, uh, this season's champion Gabor Tim. And down into the Schwanz corner we go with Philip Dietrich, sorry, with Bendegus Molnar still in the lead. Alex Sofka already choosing the defensive line in front of Gabor Tim. Round the outside he tries to go, but that's the longer way around and he will not succeed there. And that was not a good exit of the corner from Martin Zellhofer in third. So he lost a bit of momentum there. But still, Alex Sofka has rather much to do with Gabor Tim behind him. Up the hill we go. Ger Gerard's behind them with Fabian Orfandl and Attila Pucci in seventh and eighth. And it looks like now that Attila Pucci has already dealt with Fabian Orfandl. We are completing the opening lap of the race. And you can tell that the Suzuki Swift Cups are not very fast cars because the pace car, the Hyundai i30N, manages to keep with them. Across the line we go into the second lap of the race. Bendekus Molnar leading, having just set a lap of 233.96. Naturally, he's the fastest now because he was the fir first one complete the first lap of the race. Philip Dietrich in second and Bendekus Molnar immediately trying to pull a bit of a gap over the rest of the pack. This is his chance to disappear from anybody else and from any, any potential trouble. Alex Sofka still racy there in B4. He did overtake Martin Zellhofer right, up the, uh, right after the start but then lost the place again in the stadium section. And if we take a look at the 1.6 class, it is 
And now Gabor Foray in the lead. So uh, he made a couple of places. He was actually last on the grid, I believe, and he is now in the lead of that class. There is Gabor Tim in his yellow Suzuki, being closely followed by Gabor, uh, sorry, by uh, Gergerat. And then yesterday's winner, Attila Bucci, in close second. And Attila Bucci dives down the inside there. There's contact. Side by side they go out of the stadium. And Attila Bucci is now pushing Gergerat into the gravel. So makes him lose momentum. And Attila Bucci is now up in sixth. But there will be more fighting about it. Or more fighting for it down into the Schwanz corner. Attila Bucci still ahead in sixth. And uh, Gergerat is now falling into the clutches of Fabian Orfan Lu. That was a big sideways moment there. Under breaking, it looks like or looked like Fabian Orfan Lu was trying to have a go down the inside, but then Gergerat decided to have uh, a pretty strong sideways moment, which uh, made Fabian Orfan Lu back out of that one. And they are also now followed by Matej Banaj in ninth. Max Wimmer, therefore, lost the place and is now only in tenth. Back across the line we go with Bende Guzmolnar leading the way. From Philip Dietrich, Martin Zellhofer, Alex Sofka in fourth, Gabor in fifth. And there is more fighting for second into the first corner, whereas Bendegus Molnar is already enjoying quite a lot of a gap there. It is now Philipp Dietrich in serious trouble. And a lot of pressure from Martin Zellhofer and Alex Sofka in the fight for second. So this is a snake of cars directly behind one another. Philipp Dietrich having to fight hard for it. And down the inside goes Martin Zellhofer into the third corner. Gabor Tim trying to be clever there around the outside. And now down the inside he goes. More cars alongside each other. Three-way into the fourth corner. Amazing stuff there on uh, the third lap of the race. Whereas Bende Guzmolnar already long way away from everybody else. Philip Dietrich still somehow manages to hold on to second place now. And it is now a cluster of cars entering the stadium section. Not really sure who is now where. Alex Sofka ahead of Martin Zellhofer, Gabor Tim still fifth. And then there's a side-by-side -side moment for yesterday's winner Attila Bucci and also Gergerat, who is, uh, seems to be back ahead. No, it's still Bucci ahead. But round the outside he goes. Still alongside each other, but now it will be Gergerat on the inside line and he immediately benefits from that. But a switch back from Attila Bucci. Brings him back onto the inside line. Again, there was a slight contact on the exit of the stadium section. Still side by side, down into the Schwanz corner. This is getting really interesting. Mathieu Banaj there, up ahead, Fabian Orfandel. And somehow still Attila Bucci remaining ahead of Gergerat. Beautiful stuff there from both of the drivers. Fighting really hard for all the places. Up, up in second, we still have Philipp Dietrich. He is having to fight really hard for the second place, but somehow he's still managing to do that. And just look at Bendegus Molnar. He did absolutely the best thing he could at the start. Take the lead and disappear into the distance. Run away from all the trouble that is now developing right behind him. And this is going to be really closely fought, just as we are nearing the third of the race. Gabor Tim. Enjoying a better exit there than Martin uh, Zellhofer. But he had to lift off a little bit because there was the slightest of touches there. Oh, like Sofka around the outside, he has to go on Philipp Dietrich. He did try it down the inside, but that door was blocked pretty quickly there. And he is now trying the long way around. Side by side, they still try to go Philipp Dietrich. Alongside him, Alex Sofka, the battle for second place. Behind them, Martin Zellhofer from Gabor Tim and Attila Bucci. And down the inside now on Philip Dietrich goes Martin Zellhofer. There was another touch from behind from Gabor Tim and uh, Martin Zellhofer very nearly spun it. 
but in the end remained there in the correct order and in the correct direction. So Alex Sofka up in second, Philip Dietrich, oh look at that 3-4 way abreast there. This is just so exciting, entering the stadium section again, there's a touch. Hatsi Banash sends Martin Selhofer spinning, but he did manage to pull himself out of the trouble using the front wheel drive of his car and correcting that big slide there after the touch with Matej Banash. Three alongside each other. Car number 505, Bolaj Hartmann getting into the mix. Car number 126, Max Wimmer. So Alex Sofka up in second from Philip Dietrich and uh, Martin Zellhofer. There we go down through the Schwanz corner and now up the hill. We are starting to rise towards the start and finish with just over 20 minutes left on the clock there. Pendegus Molnar in the meantime enjoying his four second gap to everybody else. Let's see that again. That was the touch between uh, Matej Banaj and uh, Martin Zellhofer. On to the start and finish straight we go again with Pendegus Molnar comfortably leading. And Bendegus Molnar already has 4.6 seconds of a gap there. And into the first corner go Alex Sofka. Behind him, Filip Dietrich, Gabor Tim and Attila Bucci. Kergerac behind them in seven from Matej Banaj, who dealt with Martin Zellhofer pretty aggressively on that previous lap. Entering the stadium section, Fabian Orfandl behind them in ninth in front of Max Wimmer. race is being contested at a serious pace there Ooh, and uh, that's uh, Bolaj Hartmann in that yellow swift now dealing with Fabian Orfandl presumably yeah very nice helicopter but let's take a look again at what's happening there in the race Philipp Dietrich still in third. After a couple of laps of hard racing, he did have to give up on second place because Alex Sofka was simply faster. But now he is under pressure from Gabor Tim, so he has no time focusing on what's ahead. He has to watch the rearview mirrors in pretty much every single corner and on pretty much every single straight. Attila Bucci in close fifth there, behind them. Drifting up the hill, they go. Alex Sovka is also trying to pull ahead from the rest of the pack and he's got the greatest of opportunities for this because everybody else behind him is fighting hard and Attila Bucci makes it round the outside and goes into fourth overtakes Gabor Tim Now he is immediately with Philip Dietrich in the fight for third. So this is for the podium already for Attila Buc, yesterday's winner, who had to start from eighth into this race. So great work. And down the inside now goes Attila Buc and up into third. He is climbing still. Philip Dietrich 
trying to fight back, but now he has to give up. Ooh, this is another beautiful fight. Both of the cars really sideways. I believe that was Bolaj Hartmann and Fabian Orfando fighting for 10th. Down the inside now goes Philip Dietrich as he's defending from Gabor Tim. There they go, and this is Attila Bucci already up into third. Philip Dietrich ahead of Gabor Tim, and Gabor Tim was attacked by Ger Geratz. And there's also Maciej Banas right behind them. Martin Zellhofer, he dropped all the way down to eighth, having started third on the grid. And he is now trying to catch back up with this group and fight for more positions. This race has not been really uh, unraveling in his favor. Bendegus Molnar in the meantime with 2 minutes 30 seconds and 99 thousandths of a second is holding the fastest lap of the race. He set it on the second lap. Since then uh, the pace has been dropping gradually. Not only just as the uh, drivers fight each other but also just as the tyres uh, get worn out. So Alex Sofka up into second. Is he going to do anything about the lead of Bendegus Molnar? Yes, he might just do that because on the last lap he was roughly six tenths of a second faster than Bendegus Molnar and he reduced his gap to 3.8 seconds. Down the inside on, uh, on Philip Dietrich goes Gabor Tim. They now go side by side, door on the door and still remaining next to each other. Down the hill we now go, towards the stadium section. And it's now three abreast. Beautiful stuff there, and Ger Gerats getting himself into the mix, and not only him, but also Maciej Banaj has now overtaken Philip Dietrich, so this was not a good situation for Philip Dietrich. He has now lost three places pretty much in one go, but Gabor Tim is up ahead of everybody else in this group, so he is now up to fourth. And it is side by side now with Ger Gerats. Ger Gerats sending it down the inside into the left hander and up into fourth he goes. Oh, more contact there, but still Ger Gerats remaining on the inside and defending from Gabor Tim, but Gabor Tim seems to have made a better exit from that corner, so it's still going to be really, really tight there, into the Schwanz corner. Round the outside goes Matej Banash, and it's really getting interesting there. Round the outside, Matej Banash is trying that on Gabor Tim, but this is too long way around, so Gabor Tim stays ahead in P5. In front of him, Gergerats, behind them, Philip Dietrich in eighth position. What a fight there, what a beautiful, beautiful fight. In the meantime, Bendegus Molnar, well, he did try to build enough of a gap. So will this be enough in the second half of the race? Because let's not forget, we're not racing only over 25 minutes, we're racing over 30 minutes, plus one lap added to that. So still plenty of opportunities for Alex Sofka to reduce, sorry, for Attila Bucci to reduce actually that gap right down and attack Bendegus Molnar. Well, hang on, no, it is really Alex Sofka still in second. Attila Bucci has not over overtaken him yet, but what about the lap times right now? So, Bendegus Molnar has just done 231.9, Alex Sofka 231.6, Attila Bucci 231.1, so it's all getting tighter and tighter. Gabor Tim dropped the wheel behind uh, that green stuff uh, into the gravel. But now the gap between Bendegus Molnar and Alex Sofka reduced to 
four seconds. Adila Bucci 1.6 seconds behind Sofka. Side by side now goes Fabian Orfandel with... Uh, is that Martin Zellhofer? I don't think it is. Well, actually, it might just be. Really, it might just be Martin Zellhofer because they are now uh, right together there and Fabian Orfandel attacking. Martin Zellhofer in the fight for ninth. So 20 minutes pretty much gone, that's two-thirds of the race behind us and uh, 10 minutes plus one lap still ahead of us and uh, this is still closely fought at an incredible pace. It is a little more spread out in the lead but as we said just a couple of moments ago it's still getting interesting because the gaps are now being reduced in the second half of the race, so it still might get thrilling for uh, well in the in the fight for the victory. the line they go once again and it is Vendekus Molnar in the lead what did he just do 231.9 Alex Sofka 31.3 Attila Bucci 31.4 so the gap of the leader reduced now under three seconds it's 2.8 and 1.8 between Sofka and Bucci there they are, we can pretty much already see them in one shot together. The whole trio, uh, Gabor Tim attacking, Gergirats now in the fight for fourth. Fabian Orfandel enjoying lots of battles himself as well. He did fight for the victory yesterday with Attila Bucci. In the end he lost and came home second. That also meant that he started seventh into this race, but then uh, unlike Attila Bucci, he did not make uh, much ground and remained around that, let's say, part of the top 10. He is still in 10th place now, whereas Attila Bucci has already made his way all the way up to third. And with eight and a half minutes left on the clock, there's still plenty of time for him to improve on his position even further still. So now the race has settled a little, but uh, we are just getting ready for the absolute finale, for the closing stages, for the final laps. Gabor Tim having a look around the outside, nearly losing it in the process through the Schwanz corner, but still remaining ahead. Jergeratz holding on to fourth. They're just drifting so much under braking up the hill we go again back onto the start and finish straight we go with Gergerat holding on to fourth from Gabor Tim and uh, Maciej Banaj there they go, really close to one another. Gabor Tim. Gabor Tim in close fifth now behind Gergerats. Is he going to try anything into the first corner? No. He was having a look, but now remains behind Gergerats. And through the first corner we go up the hill now. Into the third corner. 
Gabor Dim trying to use at least a little bit of that, let's call it slipstream, behind Gergerat. So Alex Sofka reduced that gap even further still, and it's now down to 2.2 seconds. Attila Buche also closes down on Bendegus Molnar. He's 4.2 seconds behind in third. And, uh, well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens there, because if Alex Sofka and Bendegus Molnar get locked in a battle on track, it could also mean that Attila Buche might be able to catch up with them faster in the closing laps. And uh, in the end, we can uh, have a three-way battle for the race victory. That would be, well, what, what a race end that would be in the season finale. Down through the Schmunz corner we go, get get out still in fourth from Gabor Tim and Maciej Banash. Less than five minutes left on the clock right now. Bendegus Molnar still trying to hold on to the lead of the race. But let's see how close it now is across the line. They now go with Bendegus Molnar. And what a lap! What a lap by Alex Sofka. He did 231.3. Bendegus Molnar only 32.1. So the gap is now reduced to 1.4 seconds. It's now really getting very tight in the fight for the lead of the race. And also Attila Bucci is not hanging around. He did 231-0. So he also closed the gap to both of the cars in front. And this will be a three-way fight for the race victory. Bendegus Molnar has been doing absolutely everything he can all through the race. He took the lead into the first corner. He tried to stay in front and uh, built enough of a gap to lead comfortably uh, all the way across the line but now both Alex Sofka and Attila Bucci are really getting too close for comfort there is another three-way fight shall we say among Gergerats, Gabor Tim and Maciej Banash for fourth fifth and sixth still unresolved in this situation as well Gabor Tim really close there but he's been that close for a couple of laps already. And there they go, down the hill into the Schwanz corner, Bendegus Molnar. He has been in the lead all through the race, but he will, will he stay there because you don't really need to lead the most laps in the race. It's only okay if, well it's, and it's enough, if you only take the lead on the final lap and lead across the line. That's the only thing that matters in the end, in every single race. And it, will, uh, it, it now will be increasingly difficult for Bendegus Molnar, who is in the lead. But now we cannot call that a gap anymore because Alex Sofka is now right with him so both of these drivers right behind each other this is a fight for the race victory and it will be and we should now have two laps left from this race two laps we will only manage so these will be deciding two laps in this race Bendegus Molnar still leading 0 0.279 between the two and also Attila Bucci trying to get together with these two and they are now really close together through the first corner Alex Sofka seems to have enough of tire performance left now Bendegus Molnar 
is already having to defend and take the inside line under breaking but this is Brno and there are so many twisting corners so many times it just goes from left to right and left to right so if you defend one corner immediately get it, you're getting attacked in the next one there they go down the hill towards the stadium round the outside has to go Alexovka he tries to break later all of this is now also helping Attila Bucci to get closer stadium section one and a half laps from the end and Bende Guzmolnar really has to fight for it if he wins this then it will taste so sweet this victory but we are still one and a half laps away from it they are both break so hard as their swifts are flashing the hazard lights away from the stadium section now we go into the Schwanz corner will Alex Sofka come up with something 30 minutes left on the clock now around the outside he tries to go but this is too way long around sorry too long way around and Bendegus Molnar staying ahead from Alex Sofka and Attila Bucci Attila Bucci also closing right down on him this is really getting interesting now so what is going to happen in that closing lap of the race time is up right now and onto the last lap we will go in just a couple of seconds with Bendegus Molnar still in the lead of the race ah, so close behind they are touching bumpers already in the second to last corner and onto the start and finish straight for the last time out they go now but for the last time out they will now go into the first corner this is the plus one lap will Bendegus Molnar hate the regulations because all the time is now up and now we are doing that plus one lap is that one lap too much for Bendegus Molnar well we can answer it immediately definitely it is because without that he would have already been the race winner but now he has another 5.4 kilometers to fight and 5.4 kilometers of opportunities not only for Alex Sofka but also for Attila Bucci Alex Sofka trying it round the outside nice defense from uh, Bendegus Molnar will this be a switchback Alex Sofka definitely tried it to surprise Bendegus Molnar down the inside but Molnar did see that coming and covered that immediately how about down the hill attempt of a switch back from Alexovka because he's also having to defend now from Attila Bucci this is already a three-way fight for the race victory this is gonna get interesting Alexovka right on the back bumper right on that rear bumper of Bendegus Molnar Attila Bucci trying it down the inside side by side they now go on the stadium so now Attila Bucci has surprised completely Alex Sofka down the inside he's just sent it Sofka will now have the inside line into the right hander will he stay ahead yes he does but he's sliding so much and this is giving at least a little bit of breathing space to Bendegus Molnar who might now just do it but they are still close together this trio down into the Schwanz corner they go Attila Bucci is so close behind in third down through the Schwartz corner there was a sideways moment for Alex Sofka Alex Sofka definitely doesn't need this he was already entangled in the battle for the race victory but now he is having to refocus completely and start watching his rearview mirrors not something he would like to do now this is the plus one lap let's go up the hill Bendegus Molnar still somehow holding on to that race win holding on to that first place but there are still two corners left to go two corners left to go for Bendegus Molnar for him to score a victory here in the last lap of the season in the last race of the season there they go for the last time out now onto the start and finish straight and amazingly after such a long and difficult race Bendegus Molnar is victorious what a race victory for the young Hungarian absolutely unbelievable stuff there from Bendegus Molnar who wins the race having withstood such a pressure such a pressure in the end oh my goodness what a race this was it had absolutely everything 
beautiful opening laps. So many mixing up, so many overtaking, so many close battles with one another. Door to door, side by side moments. And then, even though Bendik Guzmolnar disappeared into the distance and we were starting to think that he is just going to run away with it, he was given a run for his money in the end because Alex Sofka and Attila Bucci demolished his gap in those closing stages. But even though, even despite that, Bende Guzmolnar did manage to stay cool and actually take the victory. What a race it was. And uh, this brings us to the end of the race weekend, end of the season for Asset Cup Series and uh, also kind of to the end of my voice after this weekend. So much thrilling action, so much great racing. I really hope that you enjoyed the 2021 season with us and uh, that you will be back for the 2022 also because this is just great racing. So many great championships, great cars, great drivers, great fighting, everything that you need for a good recipe to enjoy beautiful motorsport so thank you very much for watching thank you very much for being with us and whenever that comes whenever that happens we will love to see you again hear you again and meet you again so uh, make sure that you tune back in for the 2022 and uh, with the rest of the highlights of this suzuki swift cup europe race we are off and uh, from uh, pavel fabre your commentator for the weekend and for the season it is already a very warm goodbye